Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Batu, and today we're going to discuss applications of disequilibrium analysis. In particular, we're going to look at applications of this concept to price ceilings and price floors. So, as you can see here, I have four graphs, and what we're going to do is we're going to implement disequilibrium prices for these graphs. So, let's look at this particular graph right here, and let's say we're going to impose what we call a price floor. So a price floor is, a low, is the lowest permissible price that can be charged in this market. So we call that a price floor. Okay. So think of it this way. So for instance, like uh, controls that are imposed in the prices in the market. So let's say the government steps in and implements price controls. That is what we mean by price floor. Uh, it's the lowest permissible price that can be charged in the market. And let's say this price floor is indicated by PF. Now, my question for you is this. Given that we have a price floor implemented in this market, what will be the actual quantity exchange in this market? Well, since the price floor is the lowest permissible price, then the equilibrium quantity QE will not be achieved. Why? because the lowest price is PF and not PE. So in other words, at PF, PF is the lowest we can go. We cannot go to PE. So the quantity exchange would be determined by the lower of quantity demanded. In this case, I call this Q1. So Q1 is quantity demanded at price PF. And quantity supplied is Q2 which is the quantity supplied at price PF. So here, clearly, we can see that the quantity exchanged is Q1. In addition, since the equilibrium price cannot be achieved because the lowest price is PF, the lowest permissible price in this market is PF, and PE cannot be achieved, we can also say that this price floor is a binding price floor. Okay, so that's what we mean by binding, that this PE won't be achieved in this market. Now, let's say instead that this price floor was set below PE. So in other words, the lowest permissible price in this market is PF. So I'm going to label this as price floor. Okay. So since the lowest permissible price in this market is PF, then the market can achieve PE because it's still allowed under the rules because PF is the lowest you can go. But then you, it's perfectly legal to charge PE. So therefore, this is what we call a non-binding price floor. So the actual quantity exchange in this case it's not quantity demanded or quantity supplied at PF, but rather it's going to be QE. Now, let's look at the case where we have price ceilings. So let's say instead that we have a price ceiling right here. Now, what do we mean by a price ceiling? So let me call this price ceiling. So a price ceiling at PC, that's the highest price that sellers can charge in this market. You cannot go beyond PC. Okay? So if that's the case, then the, the actual quantity exchange would be QE. Why? Because it's allowed to charge PE in this market. So we can conclude that this price ceiling, which is set above PE, is non-binding. And again, the quantity exchange is at QE. Let's say instead that this price ceiling was set below PE. So let's say here. And I will call this PC. And again, I will label this price ceiling. And again, the definition of the price ceiling is this. Price ceiling is the highest price that, that can be charged. So if that's the case, PE cannot be achieved in this because the highest possible price is at PC. So the quantity exchange now would be the lower of quantity demanded or quantity supplied at PC. So where is quantity demanded at PC? So it's going to be here. And quantity supplied at PC is going to be there. And let me call these guys Q1 
and Q2. So the quality exchanged in this market at price ceiling PC, which is set below PE, is going to be Q1. That's the quantity exchange. And we can conclude that since for this case, PE is not achievable, then this is a binding price control. And that concludes our video about price ceilings and price floors. I hope